Hey guys, Lancey here. Hope everyone's doing well. Thanks again for joining me. We'll look into some more MTG market movers for the day. Let's get straight to it. So the first one is so Stolen Strategy from Battleborn. Five, uh, four colorless, one red for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top cards of each of your opponent's library. Until end of turn, you may cast non-land cards from among them, among those exiled cards, and you may spend mana as though were mana of any color to cast those spells. This is actually a really amazing card. I'm not too sure if I have this card, but I'm pretty sure I might have picked it up just for gimmickiness or the idea that you can have some fun when you're playing Commander. I know, it's a big change. But there are no other printings of this card. Um, it is actually taking off to the sky right now, and I'm not too sure exactly what's caused it to spike by this much in just the last couple of days but this is something to watch out for this could either be on its way up and stay up for a while or maybe this is just a buyer but we'll have to keep an eye on it next is street wraith from future site slowly moving up over the last couple of days you can see that it's actually spiked up quite a bit on the premium side the TCG player is still $3. You can get other versions of this from Master25 for $2.93. We'll have to see if it also keeps going up. Durga Hedge Mage. Now, with this card has been on the list for the last couple of days, and it is going to stay on the list because it is continuing to go up. It's moved up by almost 15% today. I wouldn't be, oh, sorry, 30% today. I wouldn't be surprised if it continues moving up over the next couple of days. Darkness from Time Shifted. Moving up as well, up 27% today. These are some big rises for sure. Fracturing Gust, a new one on this list, moving up by 22%. It is actually a really good card from Shadowmoor, and it is a Shadowmoor rare, which means that it has not been bought out too many times in the past. So there's a pretty high chance that it can continue moving up without any fallback at all. Next is Mitotic Slime from Plain Chase Anthology. Pretty cool card. It's really good in tokens deck, of course. It has gone up by 19% in the day. That is actually insane, but that's the market price. The premium price has probably gone up by about half of that to 10%. You can still buy them from, uh, I would say you can still buy them, but maybe Card Kingdom is more accurate. $2.49 on Card Kingdom. Maybe that's the one I should be looking at. Wrath of God from Secret Lairs, the really fancy art that's from the Secret Lairs series. It was on its way back down, but now it looks like the premium versions of it are still selling for above $12. There are way cheaper, when I say way cheaper, the cheapest one I can see is Double Masters of $5.41 by the looks of it. Um, yeah, the World Championship decks are different. Nalia's Colossus. This card has also been on the list for the last couple of days, and it is spiking straight to the moon. This is actually quite insane. You can get it for $1.99 on Card Kingdom, assuming that that's at least up to date. But it makes sense because it might not have caught into the last couple of days of price increase. We'll have to see. Death Greeter from Dual Decks Grand uh, Garrick vs. Liliana has also continued moving up. And this was on the list yesterday. It is very, very spiky right now. Um, it's a good card. The fact is, $1.79 for a card like this may be the only place to really get it anymore. Shards of Alara was the last time this card was printed. Uh, actually, Dual Dex Anthology as well, but, you know, depends on which one you can get your hands on. Next, Flamekin Village from Commander Anthology Volume 2. This is a pretty good card. A card that's a land that can also give creatures haste. Pretty useful. Um, right now, sitting at a dollar forty nine card kingdom, $2.14 on the 2014 Commander Edition. Blood Moon from 9th edition, now that, uh, now that Modern starting to take off, this card has got a lot of push behind it. It is moving straight up, and it is actually, yeah, it's actually pretty stable at $25, in, at least for this copy. And you can find other printings of it, but I'd be surprised if not all of them are moving up in a similar fashion. Strip Mine for Antiquity, Antiquities is also on its move up. It has moved up by... I'll get to that soon, but you can get it from TCG Player for $60 or $54 from Card Kingdom. I feel like there are, yes, yeah, so there's an Anthologies version for $18, and it is moved up by, wait, wait, Stripmine has moved up by 14%. That's actually kind of crazy because it's, uh, it's taking into account the um, market price and the average price. 
The TCG player price is obviously taking into account the bad, like the bad um, quality cards as well. Faceless Haven from Kalheem is still moving up over the last couple of days. I think this is going to be a consistent pattern. I think this this is actually a really good card for certain decks. And you can still get it from Card Kingdom for $4.49. Actually, you know what? That is the premium um, over the last couple of days since just a month ago, or even less than that, this card was sitting at $2.38. It's almost doubled in price. Glimmer, Glimmer Void from Mirrodin. Now that artifacts are back in, this card is actually taken off, sitting at $5 from April 30th to now sitting at $11 to $14 for the premium. You can get the Card Kingdom one for $9.99. I don't know if that's actually going to be worth it right now or not. Depends on what deck you have. Trailblazer from Ice Age. Pretty cool card. Actually, wait, is it? No, it's not. It's on the reserve list. That's why. Okay. Um, pretty... <laughs> I was going to say pretty good card, but the fact is it's actually got, it's one of the few reserve lists that's actually got another bump after all of the other previous uptrends that it's had. So maybe this is onto something ahead of every other. Maybe it is a trailblazer for a reserve list because this is actually moving up in the last couple of days while most of the reserve lists have been flatlining except for maybe dual lands. Uh, we'll move straight on to MTG Goldfish and look at what they say on their uh, movers and shakers. So, Faceless Haven moving up by 12% today. Ranger class moving up by 8% from Forgotten Realms. Uh, it looks like the top losers are now at least changing up a bit. They're not just the same cards from Forgotten Realms. So, Tefari Master of Time is now negative 7%. Croxer is down negative 3%. And Oko is still moving down to negative 3%. Look at that. His powerhouse in just Commander is no longer valid. Uh, biggest moves for the week is Faceless Haven, 35% for the week, and Shadow Spear moving up by 9%, and Toski Barrow Secrets sitting at $8.25, up 10%. Grey Merchant of Ashwardell moving up by 11% as well. Pretty good card. Good old Gary. Modern Force of Negation moving up by 3%, now sitting at $99. Mirror Gallery sitting at $33.72, moving up by 6%. Birds of Paradise 8th Edition moving up by 10%. That's a strange one. Biggest drops, Urza, Lord High Artificers, now dropped by 5%, now sitting at 70 And the next biggest is Tormod's Crypt, which I thought was actually quite a bit of an insane increase. Dropped by 12%, now sitting at $9.49. Blood Moon, of course, the big weekly change. And Leyline of Sanctity, probably to counter the red decks. Outside of that, the top losers are mostly lands in this case, which makes sense, like Aaron Mesa, Misty Rainforest, Scalding Tawn, because they have been reprinted in um, Modern Horizons 2. The Pioneer, Movers and Shakers, obviously a lot of these are still moving to Commander. If you look at Cyclonic Rift, that's a Commander card. Tender Shoot Dryad, that's a Commander card. Great Henge, that's actually Pioneer, yeah. Final Devastation is moving down by 3%. There aren't actually that many movers up or down today. Liliana Untouched by Death is still 87% high for this week. That's actually kind of crazy. And the biggest drop is, as foretold, down by 9%. But nothing else is really them that much to speak about. Last, we will cover off the Badlands or the dual lands, so bad lands still moving up pretty much for the last couple of days as well and for a long time before that. Um, Bayou has flatlined at around about $540. Card Kingdom does say stated for $649.99, but that might be a very good quality or at least a near mint or maybe near mint, lightly played. Near mint would probably be more expensive than that even. So I will leave it at that, guys. I think this is going to be a quick one, but um, there really hasn't that been that many changes overall, and we'll have to see what the market overall does tomorrow. Thanks again, and have a good one. See ya.